Okay, so now that I've gone through all of these other areas here, I'm going to talk through the family portal a little bit. Hopefully, many of you that are returning teachers have a little bit of familiarity with this aspect of it since um, it did come in handy when we switched to remote learning back in March of the last school year. Nonetheless, I'm going to go through each of these different features on this page, there have been some pretty major updates to the system. So even if you are familiar with this area, there has been some things that have changed. So first I'll talk about this landing page. So when you click on the family button, top of the screen, this is what you land on here, this manage family members page. So this is where you will add family members for each of your children in your class. This is how you will invite them to using the family portal. So fairly simple, all you'll do is you'll click add family member, you'll select the child, input all the information, and so you can add as many family members as you'd like. Once you're done, you'll hit save and invite. And it will show you exactly what it looks like. So it gives you a pre-populated message. That's a pretty generic. You've been invited to use the Teaching Strategies Family Portal and how to, how to accept the invitation, how to use it. You can send it in English or Spanish. You can also add your own customized message and then all you do is just hit send. So you'll be able to see, it's really cool, um, I'm not able to switch screens and show you at the moment, because quite honestly, I'm not tech savvy enough to merge all these different videos together. <laughs> um, but when the family reads the message, you'll know, and um, there's really not any other way to identify whether or not they are using the portal. That will just require some communication between you and the family members. Um, but you also know if they start sending you observations and messages back, obviously they are using that portal. So that's all you have to do as far as managing and inviting family members. The next thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to click on access the resources library. This is what you're going to use to be sending activities home. This is not exclusively where you'll send activities home, but this is where you'll access the development and learning activities as well as the learning games. So first I'll show you how to find the development and learning activities. So you'll click that, age your class grade. Again, you're always going to select pre-K four. These are broken down and organized by area of development and learning. So you can select all of them. You can select one. It really depends. It allows you to be really intentional in who you're sending these to and in what areas. So just for example, I'm just going to select these two. They do have all of these uh, activities available in English and Spanish. So if you have a family who is uh, primarily Spanish speaking, you don't have to worry about translating it. Um, these are the only two languages that Teaching Strategies automatically translates to. So once you have all those parameters set, you'll hit submit over here on the right. And there you go. It gives you all these different activities. So just to click on one as an example, this is what populates. So it gives you the name of the activity, the objectives. This, is, this part here is going to be helpful for you. Um, you know, it's also good information for families to know. But again, like I mentioned, when discussing the reports, um, they don't necessarily need to know the objectives. They give you the why behind the activity any materials that you may need. Um, so, you know, if you are working with children who are you know, in a remote classroom and you know that they don't have access to many materials, this is helpful in, you know, kind of screening the activities beforehand and making sure that you are sending home activities that require little to no materials. Um, most of these activities don't require a whole lot. Um, but again, that's just helpful to note. And then it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. So again, this would be for families to complete these activities with their children. Um, so all you would do is 
you go back, you hit share, and it will ask you to select which children you like. So you can send it to one, you can send it to all. And there you go, it has been shared. So those are the development and learning activities. I also want to show you what the learning games look like. So this, um, there's no, if you select this, you'll notice there's no organization as far as the age or the, um, the area of development. So it's a bit simpler. And again, pretty simple. So it tells you the game, cute little picture, and just some really quick little activities that families can do with their child. So again, it's fairly simple in order to share that with the family. You'll just click share. And it has been shared. So again, this is how you'd access these resources in the resource library. Um, like I've mentioned in previous videos, you can also share um, items from your lesson plan, like Mighty Minutes and um, intentional teaching experiences, things of that nature. Um, you should be receiving at some point, if you have not already, um, information from DCDEE regarding TS Gold uh, training on the new, some of the new features like that that I've mentioned the, from their distance learning solution. So they should be going over that in more detail um, in those trainings with you as well. So the next area of the family portal I'm going to talk about is viewing the shared resources. So if you want to look back and track what you've sent home to families, I'm going to just check all. You can, these are all different things you can send home to families. Um, so if you are looking for, you know, for reporting purposes, you want to make sure you are doing, you know, you're being held accountable or you're, you're accountable for what you're sending home and you need to submit anything. This is where you find that. So select the child, select what resources you're looking for. On the right here, you'll hit submit, and it will show you the date that it was shared and what exactly it was. And if you click it, it will again take you to that activity. So the last part that I'm gonna talk about here are um, on this side is the uh, manage family communica communications. So this is um, a bit different, this is updated from um, the last school year. So first we're talking about manage family messages. So this now, the family portal allows for two-way communication. So you'll see here, these are messages that I as a teacher have previously sent to this child's uh, mother. And I do wanna point out, this does require the, the parent to have the app. Um, they cannot respond to messages through the web-based platform. They'll have to have the, the Family Portal app to do that. Um, so you can encourage them to download that at the beginning of the school year. Um, our office, Courtney Kelly, our Family Engagement Specialist, is also going to be sharing information on the Family Engagement Portal, and, or I'm sorry, the Family Portal for teaching strategies and encouraging families to do that immediately. So you'll see here, what has been shared also shows up in this little chat, um, but you can send messages and respond in live time. So that is what the messages are, and you'll see this little red dot indicates that you have new messages. Family notes. So this is if you want to send um, information to all of the families in your, in your class. Um, you see the, the previous one, the messages, that is a one-on-one -on -one uh, back and forth conversation. This one is allows you to send a notification to multiple people at once. So see here, you can add a subject. It's almost like an email through uh, teaching strategies. Add whatever you'd like. You can add files. So if you want to add, you know, photos or, excuse me, more specific information that you have, you are welcome to do so here. So once you have all that included, you would just hit send. And the last part on the, um, the family engagement side of this is the manage family observations. So families can now also, and this is going to be incredibly important to communicate this with your families, especially if you have a child who is um, in the remote learning environment, families are going to have to be an active participant in their learning and assist you. It's gonna to have to be a collaboration in regards to um, 
documentation. So they, families, when you send them home an activity, they can send you back an observation, which you can use for documentation. So let's see if I have any saved in here. So I don't have any in here at the moment. Um, it's because these are all fictitious children um, in my uh, fake classroom. But you would see here, as this table indicates, a child who sent it, the date, and then there'll be a button over here in which you can create a piece of documentation based on their observation. So like I said, it's gonna be really important to collaborate with your, um, your families and making sure that they aren't, like I said, an active participant in their, their child's learning. And um, I just wanna mention as well that that may not come immediately. Um, just like with children, you know, we have to model the skills that we are expecting of them. This is going to be true for the families who do select to um, engage in remote learning. You're going to have to kind of coach them and help them along the way with what you're looking for and how to best help their child in this regard. So that is everything on this family engagement side. And when I say family engagement, I'm talking about these two tabs here under the family portal. Um, so that is what all this is. Next, I'm going to be talking about the family conference forms really quickly. So family conference forms, um, there are two different options that you have. One is a, um, a blank family conference form that you and your families can fill out together. So in order to access that, you're gonna click first on the family conference form here on this uh, gray bar, and then you're gonna click this green question mark in the bottom left corner. And you'll see here, there's a couple of different um, res resources available. So this is the form that I'm referring to, the blank family conference form. So it's fillable. You can type right in it and save it. Um, but it allows for you to fill in you know, any anecdotal information that you may have. So you'll see, describe the child's strength in social, emotional, physical, language, and cognitive. And then again, in literacy, math, science, and, te science and technology, social studies, and the arts. And then the plan. So this form is available to you in English and in Spanish. Um, so that is really helpful for those family conferences. You also have the option to create a family conference form based off of checkpoint data. So this, of course, is you're going to have to have children that um, you're going to have completed at least one checkpoint. So what you'll do is you'll first make sure you're looking. Oops and the correct uh, checkpoint period. And so you'll see here, um, it's just another, similar to the other forms, um, you just follow the steps. So you'll identify the family member that you're meeting with, their family members. And then you can select which objectives you want to show up on this form. So let's say that you're having a family conference with this child and for Lois, and you really want to talk about the social emotional aspect for Lois. Go ahead, save and continue. And then what it will do is it will take you to this page here. So you'll see here, there are already pre-populated uh, information in here. That is because this is similar, it, the wording that you see on here is similar to what you see in the doc, the, I'm sorry, the development and learning report gives you just in plain English what this child is able to do. Um, you also, as you see, have the option to customize it and you can include uh, documentation to support as well as you can add your own notes and information that you'd like to share with the family. You also have the option to include the objective and dimension on the form, that is completely up to you. But just as a reminder, most families are not gonna understand what you know level eight at 2D means. So once you've customized this to your liking, you'll hit save and continue. And then you're taken to this page here where you're asked to complete a uh, plan for development and learning. So here is where you're gonna include your next steps as far as what you're gonna to do to support this child in developing 
um, their skills and their knowledge and abilities in regard to the um, the objectives that you've selected. So you also so you can include a general plan here. You also can select these different uh, the next steps and customize them as well. So once you've selected everything you'd like, you'll hit save and continue again. And it creates a, a conference form for you. So it includes all this information. I'm gonna show you just real quick what this looks like. Oops. So it, it creates it in a nice concise form that's easy for families to follow. So it describes what the child is able to do and the plan to support them in those next steps. So you can use these two different forms, this one that's based off of checkpoint data, as well as these blank conference forms. You can use them in conjunction with one another. Um, you can use them independent of one another. It's really easy to do. This form that you see here, this family conference, conference form that's based off of checkpoint data can also be shared through the family portal as well. So it can be shared digitally. The, um, the other one, this blank family conference form, this one you'll not be able to share through the family portal. Um, immediately, the way that you would do that is you would open it up, fill it out, save it to your computer, and then you can send it as a, you know, as a file through, um, through the family portal. So that is um, just about everything in regards to the family portal. Um, there may be some things that I have missed because Teaching Strategies, like I said, has updated a couple of things and they are continuing to update um, the, the system on a daily basis. So if that is the case, I will address those in a li the live Q&A follow-up session that will be in a, um, on Friday, the September the 4th. Um, so if you have any questions, please make sure to fill out that Google form. Um, even if you don't have questions, fill out that Google form for attendance purposes and make sure you submit your questions so I can answer them as completely as possible. All right, well that is everything regarding um, teaching strategies and I look forward to seeing you all during our live follow-up session.